Hello and welcome back once again to this class. In our previous lecture, we looked at several application architecture and design issues. We looked at several issues such as security, failure handling, performance, etc., which requires you to take special care when you are trying to address them on a cloud-based platform. In this lecture, we'll start by looking at failure handling. That is, how do you handle failures for applications which you are trying to build and deploy on cloud-based platforms? Let us start by looking at what is the definition of a failure that we are looking at. A system failure occurs when a component's delivered service no longer complies with what the specification for that service says. For instance, you may have a web application, let's say, which has to meet a requirement that on a peak load of, let's say, 1000 requests per second, an average page should load within three seconds. So if the average page takes more than three seconds to load, let's say five seconds or even 10 seconds, that can be termed as a failure. And simply the site going unavailable is also a form of failure. Two related terms to failure are faults and errors. Fault are also, faults are also known as defects as well as bugs. A fault typically arises when somebody has not implemented the required functionality in a correct manner. For example, memory leak bugs are well-known class of bugs in, in different types of software. And a fault may lead to errors. An error is uh, a situation when the expected and actual behavior of a component, a piece of software, for example, do not match. A simple example is, let's say you write a function which adds two numbers, two integers and 1 plus 1 is expected to be 2 and if it is saying that 1 plus 1 is 3 then this is a error scenario and that means someone has coded the logic in a wrong manner and it is common that the faults may lead to errors and finally to some sort of a failure so therefore it is important to understand that how do you detect and prevent the failures so that is what the topic that we are going to discuss in subsequent files it is worthwhile to note that since we are talking of a large scale system such as cloud small failure rates can easily get amplified and lead to catastrophic failures on the system failure rates for example of a typical uh, hard disk drives are four to six percent it is an annualized failure rate which means that uh, if if a disk drive is operated for throughout the year then what is the probability that the disk will experience some sort of a failure so it, it is in the range of typically four to six percent and similarly a server may experience the annualized failure rate of two to four percent now the mean time between failure so there is a relationship there is a formula between how do you derive uh, annualized failure rate from mean time between failure numbers and vice versa and for a server and uh, for a server an AFR of 3% is roughly equivalent to 292000 hours uh, of mtbf value which is approximately uh, 33 years or so now in a data center cloud data center which has thousands of uh, servers let's say 64,000 servers having two disks each you can this these numbers if you try to do the math they can lead to a situation where every day you may have more than five servers and 15 disks failing and this is a scenario that you may want to avoid especially if you are running some mission critical applications on that kind of an infrastructure and and so many businesses uh, if they are dependent on this kind of a cloud infrastructure functioning correctly then you certainly want to avoid these kind of failures or you want to write your applications in such a manner that these failures do not cause catastrophic impact on your applications that you are running on such a cloud platform so how do we handle failures so the first thing is that before you can handle a failure, you need to be able to detect that a failure has occurred. And as we saw in the first slide, you need to understand what is a failure for a given system. It may be a software failure or it may be a hardware failure. You need to be able to detect the failure before you can do any corrective actions to bring the system to normalcy. And one of the key tactic that we have used in, in, in the past software development as well as in other systems is heartbeat which means you are constantly trying to figure out the liveness of a particular component. Now, in order to implement this, you will typically have some sort of a monitor which 
looks for the aliveness of a component for instance in case of infrastructure as a service uh, which is hosting your application let's say you will watch for the aliveness of that virtual machine and the monitor component the monitor piece uh, of software can be in the infrastructure that is part of the virtual machine software itself or the virtualization layer itself or it can be in the client or it can be a part of the application and the way it works has already been discussed in one of the lectures on tactics what happens in this case typically is that the monitored objects that is virtual machines they constantly emit some heartbeat messages which the monitor watches and based on the watched messages it can determine the aliveness of a particular virtual machine so this is the detection part of the strategy so that is how do you detect that a failure has occurred now for recovery the situation depends on whether your application or the system that you're trying to detect the failure for and recover from the failure whether it is a stateful system or a stateless system so just to understand the difference between these two in our context applications which remember information across the requests we term them as typically state uh, stateful applications that is the state can be kept in memory or on an external uh, device such as a hard disk etc and in case of uh, stateless application the requests themselves carry the necessary contextual information which are required for handling such a request that is there is no storage of information between two requests which are required for a successful handling of such a request in that kind of a scenario you can call that the system is stateless and failure recovery strategy that you will choose will depend on whether your application is stateless or it is a stateful application and often the recovery tactics or recovery uh, scenarios that you can use for a stateful applications are relatively more difficult to implement than in case of a stateless application in the subsequent lecture we are going to look at more details on how do you recover from failures in both stateless as well as stateful application cases that is pretty much it for this lecture thank you